All right, have some interesting information for you out there. Uh, for those of you who are still holding on to your Baptist system, um, we're going to talk about this thing. We're just going to get right into it. I'm not going to really do much leading up to it. This isn't what I'm talking about here, okay? The King James Video Ministries is not a Baptist ministry. It's a Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing ministry. But let's just get right into this thing. I'm going to show you the proof of a Baptist university that was formerly Roman Catholic, okay? And I don't think it was formerly. I think it's still Roman Catholic, just under the name Baptist. We'll get into this. Here we have Maranatha Baptist University, the history, okay? Uh, where are we reading here? Well, um... Funny they use the uh, title "The Miracle." Yeah, the miracle of Maranatha. I thought that was kind of funny, um, kind of like the miracle of Lords or the miracle of Fatima or you know right. all these miracles, Roman Catholic miracles. Um, Let's look at a few yeah. buzzwords from their from their web page here because this is very very intriguing and rather telling. Um, check out the phrase "an adherence to Baptist distinctives." Okay, let's just let's just read here. Maranatha's history is that of an institution committed to the principles on which it was founded, the truth of God's word, and an adherence to Baptist distinctives that set it apart from other Christian colleges and universities. Okay, uh, From a spiritual perspective, Maranatha's theological position and local church emphasis are historically vital. From an academic perspective, regional accreditation and the wide scope of its programs have offered our university graduates uh, nearly unlimited career and ministry opportunities. Of course, this is all in the Bible, mind you. It's sure. the book of Acts. I mean, it's... it's. Oh, what's the chapter and verse? I don't remember, but it's. I'm sure it's in there. I'm sure it's in there. Um, where does it get into the whole thing here? Well... Down, down in here? We, you can read some of this stuff. Well, We're not going to read every single sentence. I but, just... But, you know, what were you going to say? I just want to make one quick comment. The phrase from other Christian colleges and universities... Um, what's called a college and university setting is actually Roman Catholic in existence and origin. So, uh, I find it very, very telling how they say other Christian colleges and universities when that's an oxymoron. There's no such thing as a Christian college and university. Right. Nothing in the Bible about colleges, institutes, universities, anything like that. Um, so, but check this out. Okay. Um... That course began in 1968 when Maranatha Baptist Bible College was established by Dr. B. Myron Cedarholm and his wife Thelma. The, the Cedarholms helped raise $150,000 to purchase a campus now valued at $18 million. Oh boy. I love that. From the Brothers of the Congregation of the Holy <gasps> whoa, Cross. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Watertown resident Elaine, Elaine uh, Sen first phoned Cedarholm to suggest he consider the grounds of the former Sacred Heart Military Academy. Get and that? by the way, it's still a military academy. That's the interesting thing that we found. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, There's some very intriguing ties with the U.S. military. Yeah. Which, with the Lord's but, help, we'll tell in the future. Okay, but the Congregation of the Holy Cross is Roman Catholic. Jesuit. Okay. Fr French Jesuit order, actually. Yeah, we're going to get into that. We'll show you the proof. But let me ask you a question out there. Um, why, number one, why would Baptists invest in a Roman Catholic military academy? Number two, and more importantly, why would Catholics sell it to them? Right. If Baptists, if IFB Baptists are heretics according to the Catholic Church, i.e. the Vatican, why would the papacy have no objection whatsoever you know, no conscientious objection, so to speak, to selling their former university grounds to IFB heretics. Right. And see, the other thing is, too, here, that's important for you to understand, um, this is 1968. 1963 is when the 501c3 uh, IRS tax code came to be, the infamous uh, Johnson Amendment or whatever that they're calling it now. Um, and with that, if you are under 501c3, you can't really truly sell your property. You can only transfer it to another 501c3 organization. So again, you know, oh, we're independent Baptist. No, you're not. You're not independent. Okay, this this is crazy. But let's continue here. Let's keep things going here. With uh, was are we reading anything else here? What are we well, doing? Well, um, did you read? Okay. We we were up here okay. at this. 
scroll down to the paragraph called enrollment there you go the last sentence there that starts with the army rotc okay, chapter the, the army rotc chapter was established in 2006 and has grown from six cadets to 60 in the 2015-2016 school year a total of 42 cadets including 2000 the 2016 graduates have been commissioned since 2006 okay again understanding there um, and we'll get into this in other studies but uh, the Vatican is definitely in control of the United States military yes go back to the Crusades the Crusades back in the, through the Middle Ages the Roman Catholics are going in there they're trying to take the city of Jerusalem um, the Knights Templar wanted it now the Jesuits want it and they're going to be getting it soon with moving the embassy to tell or to uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem another story side issue but the whole point is there's been a war between Islam and Roman Catholicism, the Crusades. Remember that word. That'll come up later, too, by the way. Okay. But the Crusades were Catholic armies fighting Muslim armies. All right? What are we at war, you know, the war on terrorism here? This whole war against Islam. ISIS. So, yeah. We're doing the same thing. It's, it's the Crusades. So, again, Roman Catholic military... Academy, then the Baptists buy it, and uh, they're working with the Army or ROTC program. Mm -hmm. Okay. ROTC, in case you don't understand what the acronym means, means Reserve Officer Training Corps, ROTC. Mm -hmm. Remember that because that is a uh, going to be a key term throughout this video. Yeah. Thank you, Walking Dictionary. Praise the Lord. You know, <laughs> I don't remember the stuff. She's she's good at this, but she's former military, in case you don't know that. Um, two branches of the military. So, okay, is there anything else on this page? Yes, we're going to be one more sentence just to... Uh, uh, right here? Foretell, yes. Okay. The Board of Trustees approved the name change to Maranatha Baptist University on October 20th, 2013, which led to its announcement uh, to the faculty and staff on November 15, 2013, and to the student body in December 2013. Yep. More? Or is that it? That's it. Because okay. I don't want to give too much away. All right. For the next bunch of uh, information. Okay. Is that it for this one then? Yep. All right. Those are the key points See, from that. Again, here, let me just explain something. Um, if you don't understand what's going on here, uh, why we're like saying, okay, what do we have here? Um, my wife likes to print stuff out. And I do too. Uh, so they because, can't. Let me finish, please. Because um, number one, well, I'll, I'll say it this way: it drives us crazy to read stuff online. <laughs> okay, it's just the uh, we like printed material. We like paper. But uh, the other reason is, well, for starters, one of the infamous Jesuit tactics is to say, "Quick, quick, quick, quick! Take it down! Take it down! Take it down! Oh, oh! We, we don't want the world to see what the, what we're doing! Oh, take it down!" So they take it down for a certain amount of time until the masses start to forget about uh, the information that they had just seen and are distracted by the Hollywood movies that are brought out and mm -hmm. the worldly interests and the worldly trends. And then they put it back up and they say from the get-go, we never had it there. We don't know what you're talking <coughs> about. So when we have it yeah. printed out, you cannot slither out of it like a slithering snake. Yeah. So... We've we've noticed this, uh, you know. I did studies in the past, and um, like one was on this guy James David Manning, changed his whole website after I did my study. So my study is now like I'm quoting things from his website. Hey, you can check out his website; it's not on there anymore. So we've had experiences with this so many times, you know, of of uh, recommending websites and whatever else. And then we go there, and it's gone. So you can move or it's papers. changed or some other thing. You yeah. Know. So we have it. We have it. Uh, we're showing it with Camtasia plus we're also we have printed copies of it the whole deal so let's continue and we have other um, files Maranatha Baptist Bible College now this might be kind of tricky um, oh. to do here well, uh, check out the website let me just link Watertown history this is a historical association for the town of Watertown, Wisconsin. The print is really small, so let's just zoom into it there a little bit. That's fine. Let me do one more. No, there. <laughs> Good. Okay. 
What are we reading here? That first sentence, Sacred Heart. Okay, Sacred Heart and now Maranatha Baptist Bible College have a long history and a close relationship with Watertown. Hmm. That, th that's a misprint, though, because Catholics and Baptists are sworn enemies. So, sure. So, you know, yeah. Anyhow, what are we doing now? Next one, uh, the sentence with one year later on September 9th. One year later on September 9th, 1872, the faculty opened as the University of Our Lady of Sacred Cross. Hmm. So 1872, that goes way back. The first enrollment consisted of 27 students. The first president of the school was Reverend William Corby, CSC, one of its original founders. Hmm. So, interesting, very, very telling there. Um, two paragraphs down. Father Corby was a pretty busy man that year. At the same time he was leading this construction project, he was also pastor of St. Bernard's Catholic Church, and the huge structure now at the corner of Church and Main Streets was being constructed. Hmm. Uh, the sentence, two paragraphs down, starting back at that time. Okay. Back at that time, the Board of Trustees of the University uh, considered... Consisted. Uh, consisted, excuse me, of the Reverend William Corby, President, the Reverend Patrick J. Cullivan, Vice President, the Reverend John O'Connell, Secretary Bernard Smith, Bernard Smith, however you want to say it, Chancellor, and John Crowley, Treasurer. Honey, did you have enough river water this morning? Huh? Well, oh, no. I... <laughs> Keep I have going. to make sure you had enough river water. Some of you probably are not getting that. Uh, some of you sent us a. There's some people that sent us a link of this. Some some little teenager wrote this this little attack and said that I forced her to go out and dig through the ice to get river water because I don't want to drink city <laughs> fluoridated water. And it's like, okay, you know, um, we have a spring here. We do not in our basement. We don't have city water. Um, and not to mention the fact that, yes, there is a, a stream in, in the back part of our property, but uh, it's called Dead Brook for a reason. Yeah. Okay. Um, we don't drink from it. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's funny, too, because I saw somebody else say, you know, this is what isolation in northern Maine breeds. And I'm like, isolation? We live in town for crying out loud. What do you, yeah. what do you mean isolation? Yeah, we live in the wilderness of Maine, all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, we'll continue here. What okay. are we... Sacred... Heart College sentence. This whole deal here? Yeah. Sacred Heart College continued until 1886 when it was closed as a university by a decree of the general chapter of the Congregation of Holy Cross. At that time, it was converted to a normal school for the brothers as well as a preparatory school for young men who aspired to become brothers. Meaning a secret brotherhood of the Roman Catholic French Jesuit order. That's what that means. Young men who aspire to become brothers, that's similar to today's Greek fraternity, Greek sorority system on colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. From 1888, this one? Yep. Okay. From 1888 to 1912, the school operated as a university, but it was closed that year, and once again it returned to the status of a normal school for young men, young men who planned to become brothers. All right, interesting. Go to the next page. Meaning join the order, join the brotherhood. Okay, the school is operated just as the name indicates as a military academy. You're going to see mm. pictures here in just a little bit. We'll we'll show you the pictures here, probably after this one, I guess. Yep. Um, next, we're going to go down to Sacred Heart continued with. Yep. Sacred Heart continued with this mission until 1955, when it opened as a military academy. It continued in that mission until 1968 when the Notre Dame officials decided to move the school to Indiana and the buildings were put up for sale. Okay. And again, you know, just I got I to gotta just say this. You know, why on earth do you have, you know, professing Christians here looking at these buildings in the first place, spending way back then 150000 it's worth $18 million today, you know, there's no scripture for this. There's there's not one verse of scripture that says that we should even have buildings to worship in, much less educate children in. I mean, this this is just totally warped. There's no scripture for this, you know. And it, and then to take it from the Roman Catholic system, and the Catholic system be oh yeah cool yeah sure you know. And I'm and we'll show you here too by the way. It's not just oh well you know it's now for the greater glory of God. I mean uh, for the greater glory of the Baptist. You know, um, we're we're doing this thing. We're we're speaking against Catholicism. They're teaching Catholicism by a and, different and, name. And 
There's some surprises coming. Um, it didn't take long as a thing here. Yeah. Okay. It didn't that take one. long uh, before Dr. M. D. Dr. B. Myron Cedarholm visited the site with a vision of turning it into a Baptist Bible college. And by later that year, the deal had been consummated and Maranatha Baptist Bible College was born. It's like so warped. Mm -hmm. Maranatha has a rich history since that time. I bet. A rich history, you know? Get mm. that one. The list First of, Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Yeah. The list of improvements and new facilities on the campus has been staggering since oh, that boy. time. And there is much more to come. So in other words, under the Roman Catholic people that owned it at first, they were building things. But when the Baptists took over, that's when the big money came in. I oh, mean, and think it's about like, come on, people. Think about it from what they said in that paragraph from the occultic perspective. The deal had been consummated and Maranatha Catholic, <clears throat> uh, Baptist Bible College was born. Yeah. The, the concept of the phoenix being reborn, the birth of the phoenix rises mm -hmm. up from the ashes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it and was all, a formerly French Jesuit Roman Catholic sure. institution, and, and then it rises like a phoenix as yeah, a Catholic. Yeah, but think of something else, too. When you go to a university and you graduate, what's that university called? It's your alma mater. Uh-huh. Latin meaning birth mother. Yep. You're born again by your university education. You can say you're almost like, a you know, maybe another Christ. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, now where are we going down to? Um, uh, the, it's kind of ironic sentence. Okay. It's kind of ironic that the brothers decided back in 1967 that the campus simp simply needed too much money to make the facilities acceptable for the purpose intended. But the Maranatha team a year later saw great opportunities when they purchased the facil facility for what surely appeared as a bargain price of $150,000. Sounds like a tax write-off for the papists. I mean, <clears throat> back oh. Catholics. But, you know, it just, it just think about this for a minute. Again, I just got to interject here for just a minute. It's just like, okay, um, let's get back to the book of Acts. Okay, the early Christians, they look and they see a temple to the goddess Diana. That was in the book of Acts. There's the point where they're speaking the, and the people are like, greatest Diana of the Ephesians, greatest Diana of the Ephesians, you know, screaming and yelling, won't let the Christians talk. And all of a sudden Paul looks and he goes, you know, uh, to you pagans out there, um, I got to tell you, I really like this building of yours. You know, we're going to raise money. We'd like to buy the temple of the great Di goddess Diana to put, you know, educate our students in. I mean, what? You know, I mean, it's absurd to even uh, think of. It's uh -huh. just like, they, they must have been drinking river water. Oh, Florida river water. <laughs> All right. What were you... Last sentence on this article. Move your arm, I can't see. Start off with, in addition, okay. that last sentence, or two, actually. In addition, the college has a close affiliation with Calvary Baptist Church, which operates a Christian elementary school. As a result, children can be educated in the Baptist philosophy. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Uh, that's, that's, sure. I shouldn't have even quoted that. No. Um, from preschool all the way through a master's degree. Uh, so they brainwash you from, you know, the very beginning, I guess. But let's show you some pictures here. I just find that, that those last two sentences to be quite revealing and indicative of okay. tweaked Catholic statements. Sure. This is the Baptist Bible thingy back when it was first founded, correct? Yes. This is okay. back in its Catholic French Jesuit days. Yeah, but I'm saying this is when yes. they first bought it. Yes. Okay, After this they is first this is when it. they first bought the thing here. I'm sure you're all impressed and want to building this the same thing. Hmm. Crucifix there on the Yeah, well, there's just another water. picture there. Weird symbology on the stained glass windows and Yep. All kinds of weird stuff. Hmm. You know, you got your you got your crosses there and stuff. That's their library now. Part yeah. of their library. Can't really make out Again. that symbol, but it looks kind of weird. Yep. Inside the cult building, there's another one. Yep. Um, it's not a real good picture. But here it is today with the little Catholic, uh, Bat Cat Cat was it Catholic or Baptist? I forget. It doesn't really Catholic. matter. Synonymous. Right. Um, there again, the weird stained glass windows thing and stuff like this. I'm going to spend a whole lot of time. There's the outside of it. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Here it is back in the Je- or, oh, military academy. Excuse me. I didn't mean to say Jesuit. Jesuit military? Because but... Jesuits are priests. They're priesthood. They're not military. No. They're not, why would I even think of such a thing? Uh, but, you know, notice it has the same symbols on the wall as when the Baptists had it. Hmm. The same crosses. They didn't change it. Yeah. How about that? Uh, isn't that kind of a little, I don't know, odd? You know, I thought I, they I'm, were I'm just kind of weird that way. You know, and, and, you know, I'm sure that these young men here were trained to, you know, really be fair and open-minded and things like that. Yeah. But check this out. This is... Uh, See if I can zoom in on this thing here. You can see right here. This is the was the, this is the Congregation of the Holy Cross thing, mm-hmm. and uh, right there you can see the IHS, the symbol of the Jesuit order, right there in the ceiling tiles. Interior and fronts. Yeah. Again, here's the Baptists when they uh, took the control of the Catholic thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. Even, I don't really even know how to say it. It's just like it's so, so weird, you know. Again, there's the interior. I guess when they were getting re- getting it ready to do the whole thing. So you have Baptists, Catholics, huh? With the military academy, you see that you know they're training up the army there. You know, nice, nice little crucifix there and stuff like this. Huh. Interesting. You know. But Baptist church buildings do not come from Catholicism. That is a lie. We are we are troublemakers. We have lied about the brethren and stuff for many years. I've been told, we've been told, you know, they're, not all church buildings are bad. They're good church buildings. Again, it's in the book of Acts someplace. We don't know where, but it's there. Yeah. Anyways, there's the outside of this uh, big Catholic... Uh, That's the actual... Church, thing. the cult building of the Congregation of the Holy Cross French Jesuits in France. In France, yes, yeah. and that's a so, better picture of their yeah. architecture symbology. And you can see again on the ceiling tile right there. It's not going to get clearer; it's going to get fuzzier. But you know, right there, the IHS again, the symbol of the Jesuit order. So another picture of it there. You can see right here. So, back to the beginning. Yep. So, all right, we go on to the next one. Yep, this is an actual article, a few points from this article on okay, where are we Papist at? Corby. Second one down. Yep, where uh, he helped to found... Who's Now, who's William Corby? This is the reverend that helped uh, start the Jesuit, French Jesuit uh, school that the IFB Catholics now have as their university okay he helped to found many detroit parishes and aided in the building of many churches mm-hmm. okay as one of the wealthiest land landed proprietors in the country at the time yeah in the 1800s okay going yep. down to the uh let's see university daniel sent him and his two younger brothers to the then to the 10 year old university of notre dame in south bend indiana School staff then, as now by the Congregation of the Holy Cross, a religious uh, community first organized in Le Mans, France. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, the paragraph that starts with within a year, but yeah, within a year of his arrival. Okay, I'll read the whole thing. Within a year of his arrival at Notre Dame, uh, William com- committed himself to the religious life. He entered the novitiate in 19- 1856 and took final vows three years later. By 1859, Father Corby was perfect. Prefect. Prefect. Excuse me. Hold on, let me let me move this down here a little bit because I don't want to go over it. Prefect of discipline at Notre Dame, and in 1861, he became a director of the Manual Labor School and pastor of a local church. They don't see. They don't use the term. I mean, you got to be part of a local church. Catholics don't use that term. No. That's. The, the the fact that it says local church does not mean the same as a Baptist local church. Okay, there's a distinction. Um, I don't know how there's a distinction, but there is. Trust me, you can. You can trust an IFB that. Catholic. Yeah, I mean okay. Baptist. Where are we going to next here? Um. Well, and I again, just... you know, you can you can pause this stuff and you can read it. Okay, if you want to read the whole thing, that's fine. Father, um, in this paragraph about the Catholics' uh, tentacles in the military history. Okay. 
Father Edward Soren, founder of Notre Dame in 1843, sympathized with the North but was able to maintain a neutral stance on campus. A lot of the Catholics were neutral during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. uh, they basically just stood back and let the, you know, a lot of the, what you would call Protestants and things, people that were, you know, a lot of times Bible-believing, kill each other. Again, the whole Civil War thing was a scam, but that's another issue. Um, with the result that many Southerners continued to attend Notre Dame alongside Northern sympathizers, mm. including the children of William Tecumseh Sherman. Tecumseh. Tecumseh. Uh, Father Soren did send seven CSC priests to get to serve as chaplains in Union regiments and more than 80 sisters of the Holy Cross to nurse the sick and wounded in Union hospitals. The Catholics will do both sides of a war. Okay, you need to understand that. Um, again, spiritual and temporal. They have the spiritual sword, which is the word of God, sacred scripture, and then they also believe that they have the temporal. Okay, the sword, the, the battle, war. Okay, that's what they do. They play both sides. Mm -hmm. That's what Roman Catholics are. Again, if you're a Roman Catholic, you are not just a citizen of America or England or Germany or wherever else. You're also primarily a citizen of Rome. Yes. Uh, that's important to get. So, and we can say a whole lot more on this whole thing. And by the way, the chaplain thing, um, there will be more coming out in, that in the future. But I do have to say, you look into the who's in control of the chaplain thing with the military... Very, very, very high-level Jesuits. Mm -hmm. Extremely high-level Jesuits. Yep. Okay. Now where are we going? We're going way down to, what does it say, at the end of this term? Yep. At Notre Dame. Okay, right here. Let me just move it down a little bit. At the end of his term at Notre Dame, 1872, Father Corby was sent to Sacred Heart College in Watertown, Watertown, Wisconsin, a young, struggling college which Corby placed on firm financial footing, no doubt as a result of his training in his father's business. Hmm. You know, it's so funny, again, you know, he's a work, hard worker in business. These guys have connections, okay? Yeah. I've seen guys that work so hard in business, self-employed, they barely make ends meet, you know, and I've seen other guys that are lazy bums and they make millions and millions and millions of dollars because they got the right connections. And no talent. Okay. But uh, continue here, we have... At the end of his second term, as... There this you one? Go. Yep. At the end of his second term as president of Notre Dame, Father Corby was assigned to St. Bernard's Parish in Watertown, Wisconsin. Okay. And the next one, and the next sentence, or the next this two thing? sentences, yes. In 1886, he was elected Provincial General of the Congregation of the Holy Cross for the United States. Later, he became Assistant General for the Worldwide Order. Hmm. All right, so... Again, you know, again, Roman Catholics have all these military orders, all these different things. Where's the stuff at in Scripture? It's not there, you know? And what in the world are the Baptists doing continuing this thing? And they not take, taking down the take, idols. Yeah, they take the Roman Catholic institution with military service and military academy, and they just go and move it right into, now it's just Baptist and ROTC program and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And local churches that are being said by the Catholics, be involved in your local churches. And you'll see what happens with the Baptists. Stay tuned. Okay? Is that it for this article? Yes. Okay. That one. Trying to keep moving here. Okay. Um, uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit on this thing here. Okay. Okay. This is the article about the founder of the CSC, or Congregation of the Holy Cross, Jesuit order. Yes, the departure of many religious statement. All right, the departure of many religious re, religious also meant the closure of many schools. As a result, almost a whole generation in France had grown up with little or to no formal education in general, let alone in matters of faith. Sounds eerily similar to the Catholic University. You don't think? No, of course not. There's no tie-in. Um, um, and then the sentence about yeah, these young men. These young men became the brothers of St. Joseph. And okay. uh, just another one time, of the names shown about this uh, order's uh, titles. By this time, Blessed Basile Moreau, uh, who had been ordained in 1821, had already organized a group of auxiliary priests from among his brother priests in the Diocese of Le Mans. Uh, these auxiliary priests were to assist the diocese by preaching parish missions and by instructing the youth, particularly in preparatory seminaries and 
colleges. Um, that doesn't, it's not, it's no, don't, no, it's not the same thing as Maranatha Baptist University. It's Never. not the same thing. That, you know, there couldn't Never. be any professors on staff that were Catholic educated. Oh, that, no. They're independent, honey. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get back to that. Okay. The newly established, uh, in the, for the sake of their common mission. Okay. Here? The newly established. Yep. Okay. The newly established Association of Holy Cross took its name from the St. Croix uh, neighborhood in Le Mans in which it was formed. Notice how they say educators in the faith. Uh, what is happening when you are, you know, willingly going to a college or university and you graduate from there? You are being educated by covert Catholics. Yep. Strangers are educating you into their system. Mm hmm. Okay, I'll just read this thing here. Uh, although ordained a diocesan uh, priest, Moreau wanted Holy Cross to be a religious community. Hmm. Again, you, you know, you have a lot of these things that were community. It's commu let's create community. Yeah. <laughs> Conformed to Jesus Christ and bounded to one another. But And when they say Jesus Christ, they mean the Pope, by the way. They or the mean, organization. They don't mean the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, right. or the Bible, the King James Bible, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they mean the Pope. All right. right. Conformed to Jesus... Christ and bounded to one another by the religious vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Meaning, just like the Roman Catholic Jesuit order takes. Yes, just like what's called the the bonds of brotherhood, the bonds of sisterhood, yeah. according to Greek fraternities and Greek sororities on colleges mm -hmm. and universities. Yeah, and and think about that. I mean, you go into these Bible universities and schools and things, they will make you poor. <laughs> you will. You aren't going to have a whole lot of money because they charge ridiculous amounts. You've got to pay for those $18 million worth of buildings, you know. And then you also have chastity. They have all kinds of rules about dating and who you can date and how, you know, the proper etiquette and whatever else. Dress codes. And then, yeah. And then they also have obedience, which dress codes. They have all these other little standards and things like that. And fidelity so, to the university after you graduate because, hey, you have to financially support your, your alma mater, right? Sure. Yeah. But anyhow, is that it for this one? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, Can... no, there's... I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Well, you do. Within a few not... short years, sentence called... You're not allowed to make mistakes. Terrible. Within a, sh within a few short years of founding Holy Cross, Moreau sent his priests, brothers and sisters, from France to Algeria, uh, the United States, Canada, Italy, and East Bengal, or present-day India and Bangladesh. Hmm. Okay. So they're sending out these little goonie Jesuits all over the place, which mm -hmm. they've been doing. And the Jesuits, by the way, if you study history, have been banned from different countries. I know Japan banned them before World War II. And uh, the Jesuits... somehow after they were bombed into oblivion with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Jesuits got back in. Yeah. But uh, Ironic, huh? The, the, the Catholics don't control war. Okay? No. They the Catholics... Nothing. They're, they're on, they don't take sides. And they don't control anything. Yeah. A little sarcasm there. You yes. Know, if you don't understand that. <laughs> and okay. last. Uh, wait, we got to do this one. Okay. See, right there. That's what I was referring to, but I couldn't you get it out because you stole my my I thought did not from my steal head. anything. We don't need to have an argument on camera. <laughs> All right. On May thirteenth, eighteen fifty-seven, Pope Pius the Ninth approved the first constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. This approbation made Holy Cross an official religious congregation under the direct authority of the Holy See. Okay. I mean, just crazy. So. That's it for that article, but, you know. And, and again, you can you can go to here, you know, holycrosscongregation.org, about us, history, whatever. All right. So, let's continue here. We have. Confirmation that the Vatican was behind the sale and transfer of their French Jesuit Catholic property to the IFB heretics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're real right. heretics. What are we uh -huh. doing here? This article shows you a little excerpt about who Mr. or Doctor. He's Mr. because PhD yep. is silly. P, uh, B. Myron, Cedar Home of Having Lost the Support. Scroll down. Fundamental Baptist Fellowship International. Yes. 
Okay, this. FBFI. If you hear us talking about that later on, FBFI, that's what it stands for. Yes. Okay, which paragraph does it uh, start? Having, having lost the support right there. Um, I'll just read the thing here. <clears throat> Having lost the support of many Baptist fundamentalists, the FBF entered an alliance with the interdenominational Bob Jones University. For many years, the Joneses were powerful figures on the FBF board. Other prominent names included the Wenninger brothers and from San Francisco, B. Meyer and Cedar Home of Maranatha Baptist Bible College, hmm. Frank Bumpus of Schomburg, Illinois, and Ed Nelson of Denver, Colorado. Eventually, the organization came under the presidency of Rob Rod Bell, I was going to say Rob Bell, uh, from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Rob Bell is a modern little Luciferian, effeminate, you know, modern preacher. But anyways, uh, but it's very interesting. Bob Jones University has been preaching way since way, way, way back. First of all, they, they uh, were Methodist. Bob Jones Sr. was a Methodist. He was not a Baptist. Now they cater to the Baptists. And, but back when, like Dr. Peter S. Ruckman went to Bob Jones University back in the 1950s, back then, if you went to a Baptist church uh, on Sunday or whatever else, they would ship you. And if they found out about it, you were only allowed to go to the Methodists. You know, very interesting. And then the board was getting taken over by, you know, Calvinists and stuff like that. So they've been in the back pocket of the Vatican for a long time. And I've known many graduates of Bob Jones University, they all come out Bible correctors. Mm -hmm. um, so, crazy. But uh, but this article just shows you the IFB, so to speak, affiliation of B. Myron Cedarholm of Maranatha Catholic uh, <clears throat> Baptist Bible College. Yep. Also known as B MBU by now. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, they, they dropped the name, you know, uh, Baptist Bible College. Now it's just... You know, uh, Maranatha Bible University. Or Baptist. That's Baptist University. They okay. dropped the word you don't Bible. Want to, yeah, okay, you don't want the word Bible. Excuse me. It's offensive I, to the I last. Spoke, I, I just spoke heresy there, you know. Oh, yeah. We, Bibles are so offensive. Yeah. Sure. Okay, next one. Okay, next. There you go. Okay, we have here, let me, oh. go, let me go up here for a minute. Okay, Math, Maranatha Baptist Seminary. Uh, talking about the different professors and things here. Okay. Let's go down to these two, right? This one and this one. Right. Jeffrey Trost and David Ledgerwood. Okay. Very intriguing backgrounds. What, this one here? Cardinal Stritch University from Milwaukee. Okay. He has two degrees from this Cardinal Stritch University. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there, do you have a tab yes, open with that? Yes, the next tab. Uh, right there it is. Cardinal Stritch University. Interesting name. Okay. Um, it says right here in 1937. Okay, 1937. Let me zoom in here a little bit so we can see this thing a little bit better. Uh, the college is chartered by the state of Wisconsin as St. Clair College, a teaching institution for its founder, the Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi. The college hmm. is located in Milwaukee's south side. Um, now, that's obviously a typo because that's a Roman Catholic you know, university, and this is a Baptist. Independent. In, independent, yes. Independent fundamental Baptist, you know, university with, you know, yeah. Independent. People, people wake up, okay? We'll go to the next one here. We'll get talk a little bit more about this. How about this one? Is it this? Duquesne University, yes. Okay, the next one. Dr. David Ledgerwood here, Duquesne University. University. All right. And what about this one? Yep. Okay. Again, there you have Duquesne University. Look at the similar architecture between their campus buildings that they just showed right there and uh, the pictures that we just showed with the uh, French Maranatha. Jesuit Catholic history of Maranatha. Uh huh. Isn't that intriguing? Yep. Training people for the medical goon establishment. Integration, of we'll course. We'll get back to that in a minute. But Okay. Zoom in here. About Duquesne, one of the nation's top Catholic universities. Hmm. Duquesne University provides a well, blah, 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 blah. You can read it yourself. Oh, oh, founded more than 130 years ago by the Congregation of the Holy Spirit. That is another 
Roman Catholic, if not Jesuit, order. Yep. So, going back here, we have Maranatha Baptist Seminary. Seminary, people, they are teaching preachers. Understand that. This isn't some cute little teeny bopper girl that goes to Maranatha Baptist University and like totally comes out and like is a like you know business administrator or whatever. No, we're talking about ministry here. People training young men for ministry to go out and lead Baptist churches. And here's a Roman Catholic educated mm -hmm. professor and there right down underneath him is another one. Mm-hmm. I thought they were independent. Well, they are independent of the Lord. Go to the next one. Very intriguing. Okay, um, what do we got here? Let me make sure my pages don't fall off the table here. Yep. Okay, next tab would be about the... This one? Yes, the okay. ministries. Maranatha Baptist University, student ministries. Okay, and I thought this was very interesting, a little story on this. Local churches. Okay, let me, let me zoom in just so you can really read this thing here. Uh, Maranatha has no campus church. Students are required, they have a chapel, but they say no campus church. Students are required to attend a local church, and Maranatha students actively minister in more than 70 churches in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. Students have the opportunity to be involved in their local churches through worship and service. Each semester, students choose the local church they wish to attend and are encouraged to commit to ministering there for the duration of the semester. Many students choose to remain at the same church for their entire college career. Maranatha students also enjoy being adopted by various families in their local churches. Okay, now... Funny how they say Let's encouraged to commit. Three, three uh, little things here. Interesting. Um, first of all, we looked up a map of the area where Maranatha Baptist University is at. There aren't 70 Baptist churches in the area. As a matter of fact, most of them are Lutheran. Okay? Because of the... What's the Lutheran thing out there? It's the branch of Lutheric, I mean, Lutheranism is called the WELLS, meaning it's an acronym for the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Synod is also a Catholic term, but yeah. that's neither here nor there so, right now. So, you know, 70 churches in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois mm -hmm. they, that they can choose from, okay? Um, there was a video, and I'm not going to show it because, just for sake of time and things, um, but there was a video of them talking about the you know the student programs and stuff, and there was a younger woman, and she mentioned this whole thing of going and she being involved in local churches, and she's like, I get to work in the Little Lambs program at my local church, hmm. and I was like, okay, whatever, because I see I was raised in independent Bible and Baptist churches growing up, so I never even heard of this Little Lamb. What's a Little Lamb thing? I've heard of Awana, and I've heard of uh, Patch the Pirate Club, and Things like that. And I was like, do you know anything about Little Lamb? I, I showed the, the clip to my wife, and, and she's like, oh, Little Lamb. It's a... It's, at minimum, a LCMS, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, type of uh, childhood brainwashing institution. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I went through it. Yeah. And it's... I am very, very intimately familiar with with the classroom setting and the program and the environment, you know, and they claim where well, every child is special. No, mm -hmm. no. It's called, if you ask questions, they will shut you up. Yep. And LC, uh, Little Lambs is also an international organization. Look up the word, the phrase Little Lambs. It is international in scope and yep. it is in Lutheran churches. So, and here's the interesting thing. Um, I contacted Maranatha Baptist University and I said, I asked them this question. I said, this thing of your students being involved in 70 churches and things, I said, do they have to be Baptist churches or can they be any denomination? No reply. That was probably about a week ago. So, How convenient. you know, I'm sure that they're about ready to write to me, but you know. Sure. So, um, I thought that was rather telling. They believe in diversity. But, yeah. All right, let's continue here. What are we at next? Their uh, view on the Bible. Okay, this is their view on the Bible. All right, so um, another proof that they are Roman Catholic. Here we have, let me, 
I can't really get that down any further. Uh, Maranatha believes in the verbal plenary inspired plenary inspiration of God's word as originally given. Only the original autographs, in other words, are inspired. While the university recognized that no trans recognizes that no translation is perfect. Hmm. Maranatha's policy is that the King James Version of the Bible is the only translation that may be used in the pulpit, classroom, or public ministry of the university. Consequently, every student needs a personal copy of the King James Version of the Scripture. And you go, wow, so they're King James only. Not on your life, okay? Yeah. This is what is given to the masses to be told, okay? Uh -huh. In the seminaries, because I know this from talking to many, many people that have gone, many men that have gone through seminary, when they hold this standard right here, no translation is inspired. What they're saying is they will tear the King James Bible apart behind the closed doors of the seminary. They will rip it to shreds. They'll correct it with the Nestle's text put out by the Vatican, uh, made under the supervision of the Vatican. They will mock the Texas Receptus. They'll, the Greek text that underlies the King James Bible. Totally different Greek text. You know, yeah, that's and what's going on. And they'll add to Scripture. So, so again... You know, and there's Baptists out there that are screaming right now, we're not part of Maranatha, we're not part of Maranatha. Okay, um, if somebody came from this Babel building, or excuse me, from this system of Baptist, um, are you going to accept them into your Babel building? Because every single one I've ever gone to, every single Babel, Baptist Babel building I've ever gone to, even with preachers that claim to not be of this mindset, the, the churches there are filled with these types of people. Mm -hmm. that don't believe the King James Bible. They they hold up the King James Bible as just a book. It's just a translation. And, and whatever you push them on it, they'll treat you like you're a cultist. And graduates of this institution and others like it in the IFB system are planting churches all the time. Yeah. So you see Baptist Universe or Baptist Church or First Baptist Church or Faith Baptist Church or whatever else. They're going to come from here. They're going to come from Bob Jones University. Hiles. The bigger, you know, yeah, Hiles Anderson. I mean, they're just cranking out the heretics. Even Tennessee Absolutely. Temple. So, but anyways, let's go, let's continue. Okay. Oh, boy. This is another interesting one. Okay, here we have, um, again, MBU up here. Interesting symbol on their uh, coat of arms symbol. Yep. Hmm. They have a uh, part of the, the basic training. Repelling off of a tower. Yep. All right. Where are we at here? Well, you just you just. That was the Bible translation page. Oh, you don't actually have anything. No, because the Lord gave me plenty of experience dealing with their own terms throughout my lost life. So are we going to read any of this or? Well, um, this is interesting how they do some sophistry in there in their page of information um you know these students receive they accept young people who are athletes leaders and scholars the students receive training and leadership skills they can use for the rest of their life this sounds like a you know slightly tweaked version of the student campus ministries goals and objectives also known as yep. outcome-based education um the whole reason for the college and university system um, and it's funny because they say many former officers have used their leadership skills to become successful business or government leaders. Exactly the it's, same thing that fits in with the values and the mission of this yep. university. Yeah, you know? so it's, it's again, getting in with the club Yeah, is the whole deal. But again, goes from a Roman Catholic military academy to now a Baptist military academy. Mm -hmm. And it's so, just... Upon successful completion of the program, cadets become commissioned officers in the U.S. military. So basically that means if you go through the it's, entire ROTC program, you know, if you drop out before a certain deadline, then you don't, you're not required, you know, and legally bound by Vatican um, uh, U.S. military rule to join the military uh, in the army. But if you complete your... ROTC education, say you go to this this Catholic school for four years and you're in the ROTC program from start to finish, you are legally bound by contract to enlist in the military. Mm -hmm. And the so, independent fundamental Catholics have a very, very uh, uh, highly military, specialized program 
alliance with the military. Yeah, and the military is idol idolized in the Baptist circles. Yes. I've seen that thing so many times. You can watch videos of these people, and they're like doing these big military flying the collars of the, you know, bringing each of the collars of each of the branches of the military. Color guard. It's just like, it's ridiculous. But anyways. This confirms the history of, you know, this, yeah. you know, former Catholic military academy now becoming a IFB yeah. school. You, you go into the Baptist system, and they feed you into the Roman Catholic Crusading Army. So, yes. Enough said. Let's go on to the next one. I thought they were independent, you know. Aren't they supposed to be free of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this one, you know, I don't need to print out this nonsense of their stupid majors, but their medical establishment connection, also known as... Where's that at? Uh, you just missed it, silly. I went past it. Well, you didn't tell me nursing. Okay. You're just yeah, just different silly. things here. Again, you know, you can look up with this stuff. Yeah. Um, and if we'll, you look into we'll their... some things there academic requirements they get into the psychology and the regular liberal arts curriculum of your secular colleges and universities and you know mm -hmm. your uh, humanities curriculum they have that too yep. if you look into it all right societies at maranatha all students join a society hmm. okay um that's again an x somewhere don't question sure it. but uh this is very interesting Right, and we're doing some study on this. This will be coming out, you know, more detail in this or with this in the future. But check this out: the thing of uh, let me. I just won't do that. Men's societies, conquerors, Zeta Chi, Golden Eagles, Omega Delta Pi, blah, blah blah. All these things. Women's societies, they got the same thing. Greek letter societies. Greek fraternities and Greek sororities, i.e., Roman Catholic Masonic lodges. Yeah, look up here. Is the camera. Oh, I'm looking down there. It it's distracts distract me. I know. You look down here and you can see the thing. You're not doing it right. I'm sorry. I'm just not webcam friendly, okay? <laughs> but anyhow, the whole thing is, uh, you know, this, you know, if you've seen the, the interview I did with Eric John Phelps, I said, what about for sororities and fraternities? And he said, they're feeders into... Uh, Freemasonry and ultimately into the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. Freemasonry is controlled by the Jesuit order. So um, it's the kind of the, you know, for the college and career, you know, you know, age people. Uh, it's another way to get you in, initiated into secret societies to say, to give you that pride of saying, I'm a conqueror or I'm a puma, you know, yeah. a diamondback, you know. I'm a yeah. Delta Z new. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And again, you know, she went through the university scam thing. She actually got initiated into a sorority, but thankfully Forced got out of it. Forced into it. I did not go in my own free will. And actually, let sure. me just say this. I lasted about one to two weeks before I got kicked out because I wanted to get kicked out. Yeah. And the Lord helped me do whatever it took to get, cook to get kicked out of their system. Yep. And because I did not pay a single penny of my own free will to their stupid satanic organization, I was never, you know, I never had the, the books thrown at me where they said, you know, you are bound to our organization, mm -hmm. you know, and if you speak against our that, organization, we will kill you or, you know, whatever the oath says about, you yeah. know. Yeah, that was what, Iowa State? No, that was University of Iowa. Oh, University City, of Iowa. Iowa. She's been like so many schools, I don't even know. I get them all mixed up. And uh, there the could be one? some potential uh, Masonic affiliations with the Greek Masonic system with my parents. And that could be why she, through trauma-based mind control of, of a whole bunch of different things to include malnutrition and pharmaceuticals, shoved me into, into the Greek sorority system and said, you will go through rush week. Mm -hmm. So That's a whole other story. Yeah. More stuff on that in the future. But I have experience but, with the system, so I'm not a little profane Cowan. Yeah. Go. Very interesting how they cover up for the Greek Masonic Lodges with uh, mascot-sounding names. Okay. This is the first one I saw on this thing. The college, college Nix's Crusaders mascot says it's too controversial. But we're actually going to read this article here quickly. Um, 
Maranatha Baptist University drops Crusader's nickname to adapt it to global society. Hmm. Um, let me, this is University Herald here. Um, okay, now, let me just say this, just to reiterate what I was saying earlier. The Roman Catholic military system is all about the crusade to take the Holy Land, all right? The war against Islam that we're doing right now, okay? Um, that's what's going on here, the Crusades. Now, Maranatha Baptist University comes along, takes over the Roman Catholic Military Academy, continues with the ROTC thing, and they call their thing, their their, their mascot, the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, those are all just coincidences, of course, and two Catholic-trained professors, and yeah. And they move right into the same Babel building that the Catholics were worshiping in, uh, the same chapel, and they change almost nothing. Yeah. Um, Maranatha Baptist University, a Christian college in Watertown, has initiated a hunt to find the school's next mascot following an internal decision to drop its Crusaders nickname to adapt to the changing times. <laughs> the school's Division Three athletic teams have been using the name since its inception in 1968. As defined by Merriam-Webster, the word crusade means any of the military expeditions undertaken by Christian powers in the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries to win the Holy Land from the Muslims. The university oh. officials claim that the moniker has become out of date in a more global society. Again, these are these are Baptists saying this. You understand that? This is These are independent fundamental Baptists, King James-only Baptists, that are saying this. It's, we, we're, we're in a more global society now. People. Wake up. Matt Davis, the university's executive vice president, said that they haven't received any complaints to change the mascot. Davis said that the name ch change has was long overdue. I also, stunt. Yeah, I also agree that times change and we understand that context changes, Davis said. Our world has changed since 9-11 and we've become a more global society with the internet. Hmm. The heartbeat behind this was new, not political correctness but expanding Expanded opportunities for our students. Oh, come on. They want to try to woo in the, the Muslims, probably. Yeah. Uh, the school's move to adopt a new nickname follows its name change from Maranatha Baptist College in December. Davis said that the school has already received hundreds of potential replacements for Crusaders by student, alumni, and university stakeholders. you got to wonder who the stakeholders are. Yeah. The new moniker will be disclosed during spring semester. The school's athletic uniforms and online publication, the Maranatha Crusader, will reflect the change beginning in the fall. Ibrahim Hooper, um, communications director at the Council on American-Islamic Relations, said that his advocacy group hailed the name change. I'm sure. So the Muslims are going, yay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Meaning, at the right time, they can, uh, you know, have their holy jihad yeah. against all who resist. Other American colleges and universities that use Crusaders as a team name or as a mascot are not planning to introduce any change anytime soon. The representative, representatives from College of Holy Cross in Massachusetts, Jesuit, Belmont Abbey College in North Carolina, and Capital University in Ohio said that until now that the name did not pose any threat in their respective campus. Check this out, okay? Roman Catholic, Holy College of Holy I think Cross that's there. that's Jesuit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it might be Jesuit. Um, Belmont Abbey College. Sounds Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic and Capital University. What's Capital University? Check this out. It's important to understand that how our alumni would feel about it, Nicole Johnson, Capital University spokeswoman, said, if it ever did become a divisive issue or a dominant <laughs> one on campus, we would be happy to have that conversation. Meaning dialogue, oh, man, it's just mind like, control. It doesn't make you want to puke. It's just... <sighs> Yeah. Check this out, though. In 1963, the Capitol School, Capitol oh, University here that we're talking about, decided to change the name to the Crusaders from the Fighting Lutherans, hmm. as it was considered inappropriate at the time. So, in other words, 1963, Capitol University, you have College of the Holy Cross, Belmont Abbey, Roman Catholic, Capitol University, they're all using the name Crusaders. And they're saying, we're not going to drop it. Hmm. But I thought Lutherans are Protestant. I did too. I thought Baptists were, were not Protestant. I thought Baptists were independent. Yeah. Sure. But anyways, there's another one. You can see there the student with the Crusaders. 
you know, t-shirt jersey on. And they, they're so into, they're like so into sports and things there. And they're all like bragging. We had like the honor, like the Lord blessed us with being able to like, like go to state, you know, and, yeah. and win like the, you know, Super Bowl of college, you know, football or something. Like that. It's, it's stupid. But uh thought that was interesting. Um, do you have any other articles there? Um, Some other well, stuff. We're not. I'm not going to okay. read this. You can read this article if you want. Thecollegefix.com. Well, I go. just find their their sentence in light of our global outreach and more advanced understanding. Yeah, can you say yeah. Masonic occultism? More advanced understanding. You know, illumination, so to speak, and occultism yep. of how things could be perceived. We want to avoid controversy. Uh huh. Yeah, that's Baptist. called a you know, PR stunt. Yeah, independent fundamental, King James only Baptists want to avoid controversy. Uh -huh. That's scriptural. But let me show you another one that spoke here at uh, Maranatha Baptist University. Ken Ham visits Maranatha, April 15th, 2015. Okay, you get down through there, there's a picture of him. There he is. And uh, here he is again, another man that does not believe the King James Bible is God's perfect word. Uh, he gets government support for building this huge, big ark and everything else. The guy's a total goon. I mean, my word. You know, speaks at Disneyland and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Disneyland known for mind-controlling people. I mean, mind-control programming. Let me just... I mean, it's 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 disgusting. Can I just show one example of how Disney mind-controls people? No. We'll do that in another study. That's, that's going off in a different direction. But, I mean, Ken Ham, again. Okay? Um... Core values here. What are we at? Well, fidelity. I find that rather intriguing. Yep. Fidelity. Very popular among Masonic, Freemasonic things. They talk about fidelity. And, and Jesuit things. orders and Catholic papists. You know. And they say, contending for the faith in accordance with their fundamental fundamental Baptist heritage. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. What did we read about their history again? Yeah. Hmm. Getting it from the Roman Catholics. And. Leadership. Yeah. You know, service to God, the local church, and other students in college, personnel, ministering, and leading as a principle of life. Sounds Masonic and Catholic to me. Yep. Unity. Unity within diverse diversity governed by the parameters of biblical truth. They don't mean that for one minute. No. I mean, they, they said they, they're, no translation is inspired. How can you use the Bible as a final authority, a measure, measure for final authority, when you don't even believe it's inspired of God? It's insanity. And focuses on the whole person including mental, physical, spiritual, social, and aesthetic dimension of the individual. That sounds a lot like the Catholic college I attended in 2008 for one term. Uh, it's called Spiritual Formation. Uh, spiritual Exercises of Loyola, you know, is what the undertones of that sentence means because uh, yep. the focusing on the whole person that's used in Catholic, Lutheran, Jesuit, uh, mm -hmm. parochial institutions, of which I have experience with. So I'm not a profane Cowan. Okay, Cowan is a in witchcraft. Yes. Okay, understand that. And I'm not and a profane not... in Masonic terms. Yeah. Okay, and you're not saying that you're a witch. Right. Okay. You're not yeah. saying that. You're just simply saying, you know, people say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you've never been through this stuff. Yes, she has. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why a lot of people get upset about her and, you know, about myself because, you know, oh, Brian, you know, he he attacks, you know, we, we like some of what Brother Brian does, but he attacks the Baptist too harshly. Okay, I went through it. Okay, I was through this whole system. I've known people that are graduates of this. I've known people that were graduates of Bob Jones University. I've sat down and talked to them face to face. I've preached in the pulpits of these places. Yes, I've been through this. She's been through the Army, the Navy, the University scam, sorority. She's been through a lot of that stuff, the whole Jesuit order thing raised in that whole system within the Lutheran system like that, the IHS all over the deal, all over the Babel building that she was raised in. Again, there's a whole lot of stuff here. And but, I also have experience with know, IFB Catholics. Yeah, she was there with that, you know, with me a little bit, with it too. So, um, but uh, there's a, this is Maranatha Baptist University, our president, you know, him and his wife there. Yellow. Superficial. See, we we, we got to do that, you know. We got to stand like beside each other and go. Is it, you, your smile's not too, okay. That's pretty good. Is that pretty good? <laughs> gotta strain the neck oh, when you're smiling but, to but make see, it more. I got a beard though, and I don't have a suit and tie, oh. and and you don't have jewelry on, and oh huh? no, whatever. I'm not. All right, what was the point of having this picture up? Just well, to... 
<laughs> no, actually, that's not why I had it up. There's okay. a couple of things that I need to mention real quick about this uh, president. Okay. Um, Dr. S. Martin Marriott. Uh-huh. Um, he, uh, why did I, okay, here's my pages here. Look at the picture. Um, man. he earned a Master of Divinity degree, scroll down, right there. He also earned a Master of Divinity degree from Temple Baptist Theological Seminary. Where? Right there. There. Oh, okay. Um, and of course, he's a, you know, hometown hero because he graduated from Maranatha Catholic, um, Baptist. So, and also he, he got a Bachelor of Science in Business Management from Liberty University, which is associated with who, by perchance? Who's is the that, founder uh, of Liberty University? Derry Falwell? Is yes. that the same one? Okay. Yep. And uh, some interesting, and also I find this very telling because I have another story related to this uh, information that we're going to look at. The Cincinnati native has been a member of Maranatha's Board of Trustees since 1998 and has also served on the boards of Baptist World Mission. Hmm. Interesting because that is the scam organization that I contacted before I contacted Brian's ministry in early 2011, early October 2011, I should say. And in my zeal to join a Bible believing, King James Bible believing, focused and centered ministry, I contacted Bathlick, <clears throat> a Baptist World Mission, and I told them in simple terms, you know, I'm looking to join a King James Bible centered and focused ministry or whatever. And they wrote back very quickly, probably immediately, and, and they said, Oh, you're going to have to fill out this formal application and you're going to have to affiliate with a local church that we recognize and you're gonna have to do all these little red tape bureaucratic nonsense things and when I read that email I cringed I thought there's something seriously wrong with this picture why do I need I thought in my in my head at the time why do I need to attend a local church that this ridiculous organization Baptist World Mission recognizes mm -hmm. just to you know join a supposedly King James Bible believing and King James Bible focused ministry. Yep. And when I when I saw that and I read the email in its entirety, I never even clicked their application that they sent me in PDF form. Uh, rather, I just deleted the email and then I contacted him. With the Lord's help, I stumbled across his Brian's ministry and I asked the same question and I didn't get a goony bathic little you need to fill out an application and affiliate with the local church that we recognize and you need to have an interview and you need to do this and you need to do that. You know. I was, actually, I was actually sarcastic with her. <laughs> you know, I was, I was nasty and then, and then she wrote back and I, and I asked her if she was saved and everything else and, and uh, sent her a link to the salvation message and stuff. And so she got saved that way, but, you know, it's just yep. interesting. But... Uh, Again, I've dealt with the Baptists and stuff, and they and they get very clicky, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a you're a Hiles Baptist. Oh, well, you're Bob Jones Baptist, I mean. Or you're Maranatha. Yeah, and we'll and, talk more about that in just a little bit here. And he's also affiliated with the Independent Fundamental Baptist Association of Michigan, which, if you look into it, it's a division of a non-IFB Baptist larger organization. So you know. Um, it's just something for you to look up on your own just as a way to remember the IFBs will affiliate with whomever they want as long as it makes them money. And mm -hmm. the Michigan Association of Christian Schools. There's nothing Christian about strangers teaching your children. I'm talking about from a parent perspective here. Yeah. Okay. There's no such thing as a Christian school when it involves you as a parent sending your children to a complete total stranger to be brainwashed by their supposed uh, morals, so to speak. Hmm. It's interesting. I'm just looking at this. Pastor of uh, First Baptist Church of Lock Haven, PA. That was, uh, we used to go up to the mountains up in that area. Lock Haven. I'm very familiar with Lock Haven. That's weird. I didn't know that. Hmm. But anyways, a lot of, most of this is her research. You know, I did yep. a little bit of this too. And but um, going to the next thing. Uh, 
and also if you scroll down a little bit just to show a couple of other interesting uh, buzzwords WFBC Women's Conference so they're into feminism because uh, it's a woman's conference you yeah, know they call them feminars yeah but uh, and anyway. it stands for Wisconsin Fellowship of Baptist Churches you can look it up for yourself to see what mm -hmm. they believe rather interesting uh, BWM board meeting you know my story NTBF meeting uh, I assume it means New Testament Baptist Fellowship because I can't find an actual organizational resource that explains the acronym or what it means but sure. uh, it, it's, okay. I think it's part of the NTBA yeah. Let's go on to the next thing. Oh. What's this one here? That is actually the, the Baptist, Baptist World, World Mission website. And yep. uh, apply the, for service. Just go to that real yeah, quick. Okay. Let's let's just. Full-time missionary. I just want to show exactly how goony they are in their process. Those are only partial questions that they ask for applicants. Yep down in here you can mm -hmm. read it but let's let's continue I don't want to go off on this that's another whole other subject and this Tennessee Tem Temple right like, just we don't need to go into that whole thing can I show one thing that is rather telling about their so-called independent right. status which one is this uh, this is Tennessee Temple University yeah they I know but okay is this the, the one I have yes uh, agreement with Baptist distinctives as affirmed in the Baptist faith and message 2000 if you look up Baptist Faith and Message 2000, lo and behold, it is a Southern Baptist Conference document. Southern Baptist, very, very strong Freemasonic. Yes. Um, a lot of the pa pastors are Freemasons. So again, you can check that out. What's the other thing there? Uh, no, 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 no. What's this? An active role in the extensive ministries of the local church. Hmm. Rather telling. Just like uh, Maranatha. Yeah local church deal there. and this school you know this seminary Baptist seminary was founded by dr. Lee Robertson um, mm -hmm. which is rather interesting yep and again there's a lot on this their program objectives just to show you just how uh, yeah we're not gonna go off on all this stuff this is this is a whole other one then you, know, you could do a whole study on this um, well they they say a, the importance of regular church attendance, which is exactly what Maranatha stands for. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what I'm saying. They they all do these stands. They all take these stands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I've been to Baptist Babel buildings, and you get this whole thing, and they're like, oh, you went to Tennessee Temple. Oh, you went to Maranatha Baptist University. Or, you know, it's like, oh, an educated Baptist. Oh, you know. And, you know, I've talked with these guys. None of them, I never met one of them that was a Bible believer. Never one. And you say, well, I'm a Bible-believing Christian now, but I came through it, and I'm, I denounced the thing I was taught and whatever else. Okay, but uh, why would you stand for something like that? Why would you look back at your quote-unquote alma mater and say, oh, you know, it was, it was good times and stuff. I did learn some good things. And it's unscriptural. Christians should be standing against this thing. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit here, but let's finish up with this thing. It's kind of interesting. The World Council of Churches. Okay, this is like... Preparing the way for the Antichrist, you know, system. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go down to interpreting. Where are we at here? Starting at under the guidance. Um, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, each church may interpret the scriptures and design the life of its community. The pronounced congregational constitution does not allow for a centralized church structure, but promotes unions and conventions of individual churches. Independent. Okay. In other words, this is. The World Council of Churches defining how they define what would be Baptist Church under their system. Mm -hmm. They're saying independent Baptist churches are under their system, folks. Do you understand that? Okay. And now here's the whole thing, because I know how the brethren think. I know how I used to think as a Baptist. All right, back before I came out of that whole system. I'm not part of that because I'm independent. Okay. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Does the lost world know that you are not a Hiles Baptist or a Maranatha Baptist University or Tennessee Temple or World Council of Churches Baptist when you're running the name Baptist? No, they don't. They see you as a Baptist. All right? You're in with the whole system. Oh, we're independent. No, you're not. No, you're not. You are Baptist by name. And I remember the one time I was in West Virginia and I'm coming back. I was seeing some relatives that, that moved to West Virginia and things. 
And um, come back, and this guy saw my bumper stickers, and he goes, hey, buddy, he goes, are you a Baptist? And I said, no. I said, I'm a King James Bible-believing Christian. And his, he's like got this cocky grin, and he goes, and it's like confusion came over his face, and he's like, huh? And, you know, and then he you know, got decent after that. But he was mockingly saying, oh, you're a Baptist. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know? And I got a chance to witness to the guy. Um, but you see, people they they have in their mind a what is a Baptist, and when you say that you're a Baptist, you could be the most hardcore radical Bible believing Baptist out there, or whatever else, with a a church building that's not on that's not five hundred one c three and it's it's on private property and blah blah. You're still yoked up to these people. You're still in the system, and when the noose gets real tight, pulled in by the World Council of Churches. Do you think that Maranatha Baptist University or Tennessee Temple or any of them are going to say, we will not join with... They're already joining with Catholics. They're already... They got Catholics on their board, you know, teaching the young seminary students. And why is it that so many Baptist churches, all of a sudden, oh, they used to be really strong King James, you know, churches or whatever else, and all of a sudden, there's leaven introduced and, oh, uh... We're not going to. I, I, I don't. We're not going to do any stands on the King James Bible anymore, and we're going to take, you know, New Age Bible versions out of the church library, and we're going to take. We we can't have any of Ruckman's materials here, and and we we just aren't going to mention why. Because the leaven is coming out of Maranatha Baptist University, Bob Jones University, Tennessee Temple. You get down through the list. They're training more and more and more of their little infiltrators, mm -hmm. and see when you use the term, I may. Baptist. You are using something that has no support from Scripture. Okay? Not, no support at all. Not one verse of Scripture tells you to call yourself a Baptist. And if you try to say, well, John was a Baptist, John the Baptist. Read about John the Baptist and see the kingdom gospel that he was preaching and things like that. Uh, he was not an independent fundamental Baptist. I mean, give me a break. Some of these people are so stupid. And I but, don't think he went to a church building either that was uh, called Baptist. No. He was a Jew, okay? Old Testament Jew. He died before the New Testament came in with Jesus Christ. Another story. My point is, what you need to understand as a Baptist, if you're still clinging to the system, you are yoked up to these people whether you want to be or not. And whether you want to admit to it or not. Yes. These people are trained in Roman Catholic ideals. They're trained by Roman Catholics. They go to, you know, they're buying buildings from the Roman Catholics. Roman Catholic Military Academy turns into a Baptist Military Academy, training men for the military, women for the medical goon establishment, which are they're pushing, they're drug pushers. Is and all also they are Greek now. Masonic. Anything, yeah, Greek, Greek Masonry, another intro, introduction into the Freemasonic and the Knights of Columbus and whatever else. Jesuit novitiate. Again, you know, but let me just say the thing about the, the, the nurses and the medical establishment. They're drug pushers. That's what they are. You go back years and years ago, they weren't pushing pills on everybody. Now, you come in and they're like, are you feeling depressed at all? Let me because, give you some Prozac. Yeah. Or some because, Zoloft. Because you could have a chemical imbalance. So we're going to give you something something to help you with your mood. You know, they're, they are ready, willing, and able to put you on the pills. Okay? It's disgusting. All right? That's a whole big subject. But the point is, these people aren't Christians. They're not Bible-believing Christians. They are part of a denomination that's recognized by the World Council of Churches, that's recognized by the Vatican. Again, watch our video on the whole thing. If they recognize the baptism, the form of baptism performed by independent fundamental Baptists as being valid under the Roman Catholic system. It's right there, folks. The Baptists are not somehow the real true Bible system. They're not. They're not. Just even from a purely, just looking at the thing doctrinally and stuff like this, you're not part of what the Bible, they were not walking around as Baptists in the first century without the name Baptist or something. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. They were very far from that. But even if you just, you know, that's just the doctrinal stuff, you know, because uh, one of the things the Baptists say, they say, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. No, you're not. You're doing things that don't appear anywhere in the King James Bible. But even look at the morals, look at the attitude, look at the, the cockiness, the, the arrogance, the pride 
mm-hmm. within the Baptist system. The competitive spirit? Yeah. Oh, you don't like this? Well, then I'm going to make my own. Yeah. Most Baptist churches come from splits of other Baptist churches. I mean, it's, it's contention. It's strife. It is wickedness. Okay? And right here you're seeing, you know, I mean, I've been preaching this thing for years now. And that is that the Baptist system comes from Catholicism. And people, it does not. Well, um, and they're, they're going back and they're talking about John Smythe and, and, you know, I don't know if they're saying Thomas Helwes and stuff. Yep. I don't know if they're saying about Roger Williams or not in here. But the point is to try to see that's what created the modern Baptists. No, they were not. No, they were not. You study these guys. I forget if it was Thomas Helwes or uh, I'm not sure which one of them it was. Watch our IFBC study, Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholicism studies it's good stuff and uh, the one guy he was told they were they were taken for preaching out in public they were put in prison and they were told we can either flog you or you can attend a church service and they were like whip us we're not going into that building over there and check this so out. so don't let me finish what i'm saying so don't even tell me that these guys were you know thomas helwes john Smythe, roger williams and things like this that they're the same as the modern independent fundamental baptists no they weren't no, they weren't. What were you going to show? A couple of interesting things here. John Smythe in 1609 was a clergyman who had broken away from the Church of England, another name for the Roman Catholic Church. You know, because uh, yeah. Charles I established his own branch of Catholicism. No, or no. King Henry VIII. King Hen- I'm sorry, King Henry VIII. But now some of his followers established a Baptist church in London in 1612. Its pastor being Thomas Helwes, who believed in religious toleration for atheists and pagans yeah I, I, as, as well as I, I'd, I'd be careful though taking anything from this site about these guys honestly because it's world council of churches so but they say the same history as what the baptists claim as their origin yeah that's but, what i'm saying you okay know. but i'm just saying i don't you know some of these guys thomas Helwes and john smythe they're you know pretty decent guys i'm not saying they were perfect or whatever but i'm just saying i don't take a whole lot from this stupid you know thing here let's go back to this less vexing um but you know just the whole point needs to be made that again another confirmation the baptists of sorry the baptists of the modern uh ifb movement independent fundamental baptist movement it comes from catholicism it's yoked up to catholicism they're teaching they're being taught by catholic professors catholic trained professors I mean, it's right there you know and, and i get so sick and tired of people saying you're so conspiratorial. You just think a Baptist and, or the the Baptists. You think the Jesuits and the Catholics are behind everything. It's just like we show the proof. It's right there. It's not our opinions. It's not well. You know, we're just crazy and whatever else, and and you know, we're just uh, isolated and things. I just uh. so that's going to be it for this study. Um, you know, we're going to be bringing out more information as time allows and things. Uh, it's just, if you, I mean, it, I just don't understand how anybody can continue in this thing. I mean, I remember back when I was in the whole Baptist system and I had the pride thing going in my suit and tie. And we went door to door and we preached on the street and all the other things that lead to so much pride within the Baptist system. And I started to hear some of these, you know, things on the whole Baptist cult. And it was just like... I'll never quit the Baptist church, you know, and it, and I, and I, outwardly I was like, never, I'll never leave. I'll never not be a Baptist. And, but inwardly it was like the Lord was working on my heart and I was saying, I can't continue in this. I can't continue living this lie, um, going to a system and claiming to be a Bible believer in all matters of faith and practice when I know that his, what we're doing has no basis in scripture. Um, and then seeing the fact that these Babel buildings are yoked up to the government through 501c3 incorporation, uh, seeing the Roman Catholic things, and constantly being told by Baptist preachers to, to not talk about the Catholics. You know, always being, you know, let's scale it down here, okay? We were passing out gospel tracts, you know, at Liberty Baptist Church. It was a Jack Hiles spinoff. He actually spoke there. I stood in the same pulpit where Hiles once preached. You know, for those of you out there that think I'm just a, you know, just some crazy with a camera that sits behind a computer. No, I've been around. And, um, you know, I remember that uh, the one older man there, he was 
like you do janitorial stuff around and things, try to take care of the place. And he put out a bunch of tracts against Catholicism from Czech publications. And it got back that it was Liberty Baptist Church, and it was just like, he got called on the carpet for it. And we were like, you know, can we go out and pass out tracts? No. You know, the senior pastor, no, 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 no. And it was always like this, you know, hey, can we speak against Catholicism? Oh, no, 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 no. They, right away. Uh, Country Chapel Baptist Church in Eldred, Pennsylvania, uh, Bruce Ireland, the pastor there, I was doing an end times seminar, and he said, hey, he said, I, I just wanted to, you know, called me aside and things. I've been that, done that many times, too. I get called back into the office, into the pastor's office, and and, and, and he, saw, he said to me, he said, hey, um, just, just take it easy on the Catholics, okay? You know? And he told us a story when we got it. We got called on the carpet, the two, two of us, you know, and stuff, because we were being disobedient, you know, to their Rebels. system. Yeah, that's what he called us. And uh, and he said that he knew a Baptist pastor that spoke against Catholicism, and he lost his church as a result. And I said, I thought the church was the people, not the building. Well, yes, but you know, uh, um, yeah. And so many of these Baptists, I've seen them, and they're just like, I can't really say you know anything against the Catholic Church. And I'm going, it's bad. That's bad. Yeah, and again, some Baptist out there is going, oh, my pastor speaks against the Catholic Church, and blah, 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 blah. So you think. But you're yoked up. You're yoked up. Even if you have the most radical anti-Catholic Baptist preacher that's fearless and whatever else, you're still yoked up to all the other Baptists mm -hmm. through your name. So and we can keep me, going on and on. What and are we say there is a, a you know Lutheran who visited Country Chapel Catholic? Baptist Church in Eldred, Pennsylvania, and uh, ma'am and uh, I mean Tammy Ireland was talking to this Lutheran that was visiting, and me being ex LCMS, you know, and ex uh, raised by the Jesuits, you know, um, the Lord gave me an open opportunity to try and witness to the guy, and I was trying to lovingly tell him, um, you know, I was trying to tell him that. I was raised in your system. I know, you know, what you're going through, and I forget what was being said, but, uh, ma'am and just, I mean, Tammy just glared at me because I was, I would dare to speak against the Lutherans, and it's funny because the Lord gave me a lot more intimate knowledge about the Lutheran, Catholic, and Jesuit system than she has in her little pinky nail, and, you know, for, yeah, for her to pridefully act like, oh, you know, we're Christian because we're IFB. Um, yeah, the whole the whole reason she shot her down um, was because there was money involved. Yes. Uh, he was a business partner there and stuff like that. So you and know, she runs and, the and, business. And it, again, Country Chapel Baptist Church. We talked about this in other studies, but it was we were involved there and stuff, and and they brought basically brought us there under false pretenses, and were using us for me for my video abilities, her for her computer abilities, and it was the Baptist Church, Baptist Church up front and a store in the back mm -hmm. all owned by the pastor and his wife yep so well they steeple on the building yeah yeah the whole thing but you know and they had catholics and lutherans and whatever else that they're in business with uh came out recently and they they have a whole nutrition store in the basement of the church and business that's run by a roman catholic catholic edu educated woman so it's just like get out of the baptist system okay brethren i mean you know yeah, we slam things. And if you're Roman Catholic and you watch this whole thing, I know that there are Catholics that are really sincerely looking for the truth. You're confused right now because the Catholic Church with the Pope, Pope Francis, is, is bowing to all kinds of very wicked people and saying, you're all part of the church. You're all part. You all, we all have our ways to heaven. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Peter taught. That's not what Jesus taught. I mean, come on. You know, go to the Scriptures the Bible alone should be your authority. Jesus Christ died to pay for your personal sins. Call upon the Lord. All right? Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Come to Him in that repentant, contrite, broken spirit and say, I'm a sinner. I messed up. I don't want to be in the organized religion anymore. I, this stuff is just... I'm so sick and tired of this whole thing. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching these videos. You're never going to get this stuff in some church building and you know it. All right? You'll learn so much more when you have that personal walk with the Lord. You meditate upon His Word on a daily basis. It's just so neat. You meet another Bible-believing Christian. There's instant fellowship. It's it's a wonderful thing. Uh, that's what we want for people. That's why we are in ministry. That's why we continue 
in spite of all the people that attack us and put us down and stuff and just hate our guts. I mean, there's been so many just vile attacks upon myself and my wife and even our son. I mean, leave our son out of it for crying out loud, people. You know, but that's that's just going to encourage them to, to attack my son more now, probably, whatever. They're going to go to hell. Their damnation is just. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just, please, please. Um, we're trying to reason with you. If you're Baptist, come out of your system. If you're Catholic, come out of your system. If you're any other denomination, come out of it. King James Bible-believing Christian. This is the true Bible that comes from Antioch. The other ones come from Alexandria, Egypt. They're not true Bibles. This is your standard. Simple. That's all there is. I mean, just, this is the standard. You know? Some guy's preaching to you and stuff. You follow along this, and the scriptures turn to the where he's reading from, and you go, wait a second, that's not what the Bible's saying. The Holy Spirit will give you that discernment when you have that personal walk with the Lord, when you're truly saved, when you're truly born again. So, enough said. Come out of these things, okay? And run away from the church buildings. Yes, absolutely. That's going to be it. We thank you for watching.